We don't need to wait for someone else to come along and make us happy. I like to savour little moments that make me smile. Moments just for me. I'm my happiest when I'm outside in nature, going on long walks or reading a really great book. I love photography, capturing the perfect moment and filmmaking about subjects I feel passionate about. I adore watching films and discovering other people's art and listening to music that makes me feel. These are all moments for me. They make me happy. I love the Miley Cyrus lyric, I can buy myself flowers. It doesn't mean someone else can't buy them for you, but it means there's so much you can do just for yourself. I often like to take myself out on a date, just to treat myself a little. Oxford is one of my favorite cities and it's great for book shopping. So it's the perfect location for a self-love date day. Obviously I picked up some books, it would have been rude not to, so it seems only right to end this video with a little haul. Okay, the first book that I picked up is The Creative Act, A Way of Being. This is by Rick Rubin. This is a book I have seen so many content creators, especially on YouTube, reading at the moment, so I thought it's got to be good. So I picked it up, and I have since started reading it. Mm. This promises to be a guide into creativity. It's certainly not the kind of book I would normally pick up. I don't normally reach for these kind of things at all, but based on how many good things I'd heard, I thought I'd give it a go. And I have read about 50 pages at the time of filming this. And at the moment it's very bollocksy, <laughs> is my take. The cover for a book all about creativity is pretty boring. It's a kind of interesting looking book because, I mean, it looks like it's got a boob on the front of it to start with. I'm not really sure what the cover means exactly, maybe that'll be revealed to me. There's very little information about this book given on the actual book itself and you kind of have to dive into it. And whilst at times I've been nodding along like, ah yes, okay, it's very much metaphors and flowery language around things and doesn't actually give you any information. I kind of thought this would be a little bit of a structured guide into something helpful, but it just hasn't really been that. I will keep reading it because I want to see how it evolves, 
but for me taking a dive out of my reading comfort zone to go towards this hasn't really paid off at the moment. The other two books I got I'm hoping will. So I do not like sci-fi. It's not a genre I specifically reach out for, I especially don't like space-based sci-fi. However, last year I read The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, which is among many different types of sci-fi partially space-based, and that kind of opened my eyes to maybe some books I'd been missing out on, and maybe that I needed to broaden my sci-fi reading horizons. So when I saw In Ascension, I thought I would give it a go. This is by Martin McInnes, and this sounds very interesting. The blurb takes you on a little bit of a journey. Lee grew up in Rotterdam, drawn to the waterfront as an escape from her unhappy home life. Enchanted by the undersea world of her childhood, she excels in marine biology, travelling the globe to study ancient organisms. When a trench is discovered in the Atlantic Ocean, Lee joins the exploration team, hoping to find evidence of the Earth's first life forms. What she instead, fi instead finds calls into question everything we know about our own beginnings. So that kind of, that, that pulled me in. I was like, okay, interesting, right? We've got this kind of mystery element there. Her discovery leads Lee to work for an ambitious new space agency, where she learns that the Atlantic Trench is only one of several related phenomena ac from across the world, each piece linking up to suggest a pattern beyond human understanding. Lee knows that to continue working with the agency will mean leaving behind her declining mother and her younger sister, and faces an impossible choice, to remain with her family or to embark on a journey across the breadth of the cosmos. I think this sounds very interesting. It's the winner of the Blackwell's Book of the Year. It's got fantastic reviews, astonishing, beautifully written, richly atmospheric. I don't think I'd ever read a book that was as profound and moving at every scale. The Cell, The Family, The Universe, stunning. Utterly compelling. Like, it sounds great. It sounds totally not like the kind of thing I would usually pick up, but I think it sounds really good. I also picked up my first Sebastian de Castel. This is the Malevolent, Malevolent Seven. Now, I know nothing about this. I don't know if this was the right Sebastian de Castel to pick up, but for me, it was the one that I thought sounded really interesting. Think you know wizards? Think again. Picture a wizard. Go ahead, close your eyes. There he is, see? Old skinny guy with a long straggly beard, no doubt he's wearing an iridescent silk robe that couldn't protect his fragile body from a light breeze. The hat's a must too, right? Big floppy thing covered in esoteric symbols that would instantly show every other mage where this one gets his magic. Now open your eyes and let me show you what a real war mage looks like. But be warned, you'd probably, you're probably not going to like it. We're violent, angry, dangerously broken people who sell our skills to the highest bidder. Moral or ethical considerations be damned. At least until such irritating concepts as friendship and the end of the world get in the way. My name is Cade Ombra and I currently make a living working as a mercenary wanderist. I used to have a far more noble sounding job title until I discovered the people I worked for weren't quite as noble as I believed. Now I'm on the run and my only friend, a homicidal thunder mage, has invited me to join him on a suicide mission against some of the deadliest wizards in this world. Time to recruit some very nasty people to help us on this job. I love so much about this. I love the humour element, the narration, the way that the narrator is talking to the reader. I love the fact that we've got this build-up of a team coming together, which gives me like Kings of the Wild type of vibes. It just sounds super fun, and I had a look at the first page and it still continues that fun tone along again. It has, to start with, the same line from the blurb about picturing a wizard, and then it just goes on to have like the first line of dialogue <laughs> is just filled with swear words and insults, and I just think it sounds great. And the fact that the chapter title is chapter one, real mages don't wear funny hats. It, it's giving Percy Jackson vibes with the chapter titles. So much about this looks a lot of fun. So I'm excited for this one. I don't know if anyone cares about this, but I do. I picked up these little notebooks as well. So I'm hauling them. I wanted to get some kind of pocket sized notebooks. I mean, I don't know if this is actually gonna fit in my pocket, but they're as small as I could find because I just like having a notebook on me constantly. My brain is constantly thinking of things and I don't wanna write them all down in my phone. So I got these little notebooks and I got a couple of artist pens to go with them because I like being able to draw in them as well and I just find they write nicely. These are all from Waterstones and we've got some Van Gogh ones and then we've got some Klimt ones. You may have noticed I was reading The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa and this is translated from Japanese by Stephen Snyder. This had a really interesting concept. I have actually now finished this book and I'll talk about it properly in my wrap up but just to give you a little bit of a flavour for it. This is set in a world where there are things that just disappear. They literally removed from the world, or well, it's set, set on an island actually, rather than like the whole world, set on an island where things disappear. They're removed from the world and the memory police kind of enforce this. It's a dystopian society and no one can remember what these things were and they just, they're just gone. So for example, perfume 
disappears, nobody knows that perfume ever existed, it's just gone. They just have this vague feeling that something's not there anymore. And there's also these people that do remember and that they kind of hold on to the fact that those items were all real and they know, but those people are kind of in hiding because they're not really meant to exist. This is a literary fiction, literary dystopian fiction, and I had so many questions going into it, like why do we have these things disappearing? What is the purpose? How is each thing picked? Who is picking it? Is it picked at random? Is there actually a meaning for it behind it? Like all of these questions, does this happen to the rest of the world? Is it only on this island? Is this island aware that there are other places that exist? And I feel incredibly dissatisfied incredibly dissatisfied. The writing style was very nice, it flowed very nicely, and at times the writing felt really beautiful with the description of some of the things that were disappearing, but generally it, it wasn't It wasn't the vibe. It wasn't for me, unfortunately. I could totally see how other people would enjoy this, but for me it felt very dissatisfying, and I will talk about that more in my wrap-up. It wasn't the one, unfortunately. Okay, that was my little haul and my little mini book review. Thank you so much for coming along to this vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's just my little bookshop date. Don't forget that you can take yourself on a date. You don't need anybody to take you on one. You can do it yourself. You can go to the cinema on your own. You can go out for dinner or cafes on your own. You can go out to the bookshop on your own, which is the very best place to go on your own because it means you're undisturbed and you can just browse for as long as you want and you can get lots of books, which is always a win. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.